There is this shading technique in medical animation that was particularly popular before PBR or physically based rendering engines were as common as they are today. And that shading technique was to create fake x-rays. I'm sure you will have seen these before. It's become quite cliche. It's used in far too many adverts for painkillers. The idea behind this shader is that you drive the opacity and the brightness based on the angle of a polygon to your camera. So if a polygon is pointing towards the camera, like in the middle of the arm here, it becomes transparent. And if it's pointing away, like at the top here, it becomes opaque and it becomes glowing. So like I said, this is a bit cliche, but we can use a similar principle to create this kind of geometry based tune shading effect in Houdini. So let's have a look. So here is a simple scene where I've just created a redshift light, a camera and a background. And let's start off with a simple example using a pig head. So we'll drop down a geo container, dive inside and in here we'll drop down a pig head. So this pig head will give it an easy difficulty and we'll translate it to units in Y. And then let's give it some subdivisions, maybe subdivision depth of two. Next, we'll need to give it some point normals. and we can drop down our first wrangle. So in here, we're going to figure out which polygons are facing towards the camera or which are facing away from the camera. In order to do that, we need the camera. So let's drop down an object merge and in here, grab our camera and we want the cam origin. So this is going to give you a single point, but at the moment it's at the world origin. So that's clearly not where we are. Uh, what we want to do is transform into this object and that gives you the actual position of the camera. And that's something we can put into input too. So let's first read out that position of the camera, call it vector camera position is a point attribute coming from input stream one. It's called the position and we want to read it over point zero because it's only a single point. Next, we want to create a vector between the position of the camera and each point on our geometry. Let's call that vector dir for direction. And that's the position of the currently evaluated point minus the position of the camera. And for good measure, let's normalize that direction vector. So the next thing we're going to do is create this dot product between the direction vector and the normals of the geo. But before we do that, let's have a look at what that dot product actually is and what it is that we're, we're calculating. Let's maybe write out this direction vector to an attribute v at dir equals dir, and let's visualize it. And you visualize this by hitting the I and then clicking on the uh, particular attribute that you want to visualize and down here there's the visualization button visualize there and you go to your settings we want it to be a marker we don't want it to be text we want it to be a vector trail now it looks as though nothing's happened but that's because everything is pointing towards the camera that we're currently looking through so if you move the camera you see that actually we've created a whole bunch of different vectors that are all pointing towards the camera. Maybe let's switch off the subdivide for a second so that we can see what we're doing a little bit more closely. Okay, if we now also show the normals, then you can get an idea for what we're about to calculate. So the dot product is going to give you a value based on the alignment of that normal vector with the directional vector pointing towards the camera. So if the normals are pointing in exactly the same direction as this direction vector, the dot product will be one. If it's pointing away, it'll be minus one. And if it's pointing directly perpendicular like it is here, it will be dot product value of zero. And so that gives you value that we can then uh, use to manipulate things further down the line. If at val for value um, is the dot product of the normal and our dir vector. And let's maybe switch off our normal view and our dir visualizer. And instead let's visualize that value. And so you can see that it's a positive value when it's pointing towards the camera, it's a negative value when it's pointing away from the camera, and it's zero when it's perfectly perpendicular. And you can see that as well here in the val that we've just written out. We can get rid of this temporary direction vector, we don't need it anymore. And let's go back to our shot cam position and turn off the visualizer. Okay, so now that we've calculated our value attributes where it's one if it's pointing directly towards the camera, it's minus one when it's pointing directly away from the camera along the same axis as the camera pointing towards the object, and it's exactly one if it's perpendicular to the camera angle. So if it's facing away, let's say that side. Now what we want to do is use that value to start cutting the geometry. So let's drop down a poly cut and we want to cut edges and we want to cut at an attribute that we called value when it's crossing uh, the zero value. So if it's going either from positive to negative or negative to positive, and we want to uncheck keep polygons closed. Next, we're going to drop down another 
rectangular angle. And here we're going to create a slider that we'll use as our threshold for what to keep and what to get rid of. So let's say float threshold. And we'll create this threshold slider. Hit the button here to create your interface element. There we go. Let's set this to a very small value because we want everything that's really quite close to zero. So 0 0.0001. Next, we're going to say if that value is smaller than negative threshold or if it's larger than positive threshold let's remove the points there we go here we have our tune shader now the interesting thing is that as soon as you start moving the actual shot camera this will update if you change it so that you're no longer on the shot camera it doesn't update and so you get this rather abstract looking object that as soon as you kind of rotate into the correct position it becomes visible again what it actually is and the other thing we can do as well of course is if we had to transform before any of this stuff in the network happens and we start rotating our pig head then this updates automatically to always give you that kind of a tune shader type of outline now the geometry isn't particularly neat here so let's clean it up a little by adding a fuse and so we've gone from 2600 points to about 600 points great let's add a polypath as well to glue things together a little bit better and we want to connect the endpoints because you know there'll be multiple lines that are quite close together and so it's nice to connect those and essentially, that's it. I mean, the geometry itself is maybe a tiny bit uneven where the points are. So what we could do is drop down and resample and set that to something like 0 0.05, let's say, uh, to get some slightly more even geometry here. And let's add a null for good measure. Let's call it out. Then we head up one level. We can assign a material that I created earlier called lines and in the redshift tab let's go and render this as a strand and let's say a uh, capsule with a desolation subdivision of 12 maybe and let's hit render so there we go it's a little on the thin side so maybe we want to grab our scale and bump it up a little bit there we have our tune shader let's go for a slightly more complex example drop down another geo node maybe copy all of our setup except for the pig head into here and let's grab a file that i downloaded which is a 3d scan that i got from 3dscans.com and maybe reposition this slightly with a match size so let's align it with the bottom of the y-axis and maybe make it a target size of three by three by three and scale to fit so in this case we won't need to subdivide it because it's already really quite detailed in terms of the poly count but the poly layout itself is not particularly pretty although this is going to give us some maybe slightly glitchy results it also gives you quite a lot of detail which is really interesting so we can get rid of our subdivide and before we assign our normals let's add a transform and let's set that transform to rotate in y by dollar ff the frame value is going to be our rotation in y and if we set this 360 frames put a display flag on we'll see that this is rotating 360 degrees over the course of this timeline now we can pipe that into our normal and the entire thing calculates but at the same time what i'd like to do is keep the geometry itself as well so this entire layout is going to calculate it's taking a little while longer now of course because it's much more complex geometry here we have our tune shader and maybe let's branch off uh, around after the transform call this out geo and that one is out lines because this is rendering as redshift strands if we also render the actual underlying geometry uh, in the same geo container it's going to treat that as strands and uh, that's not what we want so let's add a second container here so call this one lines let's call this one geo and add an object merge where we're grabbing the out geo and as for a material um, i prepared a very simple geo material here so we have our lines material and we have our geo material so let's render that see what it looks like Yeah, like I said, it's quite interesting to do this with more complex geometry because you really get that sort of tune shadery feel going all the way across. And because this is updating, if I just grab a snapshot and go to say frame 120, it takes a little while to calculate. And there we go. 
it updates uh, to give you a completely new tune outline that's following the outline and then some internal details here like like in the hair and with the eyebrows and, and things like that now one last thing what if you want to make sure that no matter how close the camera is this thickness of that line always stays the same that's quite easy to set up we go into our lines geo container and what we need to do is calculate the thickness of the line which we do via the p scale of, of the points on that line we need to calculate what that p scale is based on the distance from the camera and so that way when the camera is moving it'll always be proportional to that distance and so the line thickness will stay the same so what we need in order to calculate the distance well we already have this camera being imported here and let's at the after the transform node let's grab the center of the object so we'll need a extract centroid and we'll merge those two points so actually the extract centroid we need to run that over detail so we get a single point that's right at the middle of our geometry here and so let's merge the points of our camera with the single point at the center of the statue and let's create a line between the two so let's drop down an add sop and go to polygons by group and now that will have created a line and with a measure sop we can measure the perimeter or the length we want to measure it throughout and let's call it the distance dist so now if we click on the primitives here we can see that we've created this attribute called dist and in order to use that for our p scale we'll need another wrangle take our measure in the second input slot here and let's first grab that distance value so we'll need a float we'll call it dist for that we need to read a primitive attribute on our input stream with the id one uh, it was called dist and it was on the first primitive so now let's create another slider let's call it a floats multiplier and let's set it to something like 0 0.02 maybe and say that the p scale is the distance times our multiplier and if we now head up one level and render this we'll see that it's far too big so let's maybe grab our global scale multiplier here and set it to 0.1 that's better let's grab a snapshot and lock our camera down and move in you'll see it's still quite thin and then if we have got our camera locked and let's move out and refresh our render you'll see that across these different shots the thickness relative to the size of the statue changes but the thickness of the line on screen is actually the same so how thick this is on your screen compared to how thick this is here is the same one note is that as soon as you start moving your camera around every time you move your camera it's going to recalculate what the exact outline is and so it can become a little slow it's maybe best to switch off that node right before you start moving around your camera to make sure that you don't slow your scene down quite a bit all right that's it it's a, just a fun little setup using some old school shading techniques but turning them into geometry in inside Houdini and doing something a little bit different with it. Hope you enjoyed it. Thanks for watching and see you in the next one.